We all know the saying, if all else fails, <laughs> read the directions, right? Well, Philippians 2.14 says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. And I don't know about you, I haven't totally failed, but I sure haven't succeeded at everything without grumbling or arguing, and so I guess I need to read the directions. The problem is, we think verse 14 is the directions, are the directions. <laughs> all of them. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. That's what we're to do. It reminds me a little bit, though, of uh, a math worksheet that you may have received early on in school where there's, you know, say 20 math problems, and the, the directions simply say solve the problems. Well, if that's what you have, if that's what you've been given, what does that presuppose? Hopefully, if the teacher was any good, it, it presupposes the teacher already told you how to do those. And so solve the problems is telling you what to do, but you've already been told how. Well, that's what we need to realize. Philippians 2.14 is telling us what to do. We need to look for the how, and we need to realize it's always there. This is the growth pyramid I talk about. We focus on the what, and sometimes we being teachers and preachers, and we leave out the how. And that's essential, and there's another essential element even below that. Well, what is the how? In general, in the Bible, Romans 12, 2 is the how verse. It says, do not be conformed to this world. There's the what to do. Don't be conformed. But be transformed, be changed by the renewal of your mind. That's how. Uh, that's how we are changed so that we don't conform. And the thing is, there always then will be a specific how as well. That's the general one for everything. Well, there'll be a specific way that a passage tells us we need to, or tells us to renew our mind, helps us renew our mind, change our way of thinking about the specific what. In Philippians, prior to verse 14, it says in verses 3 and 4, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you, but each of you to the interests of the others. Now, one thing to realize is that the what and the how often intertwine. And, you know, Paul's telling, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. That's, that's a what, but it's beginning to hint at the how. And the next verse really tells about it. Rather, in humility, val value others above yourselves. Uh, that's the how. How am I going to get to the point that I do everything without grumbling, without arguing with someone? Well, when I can get this humble attitude that doesn't look to my own interest first, but each of us to the interest of others. That's the how that comes into play. And then there's even a further how that Paul gives before he gets to that Philippians. And, and oftentimes the how comes before, sometimes after, but in this case it's coming before. But a key one he gives in verses 5 through 8, he says, in your relationships with one another, where he's going to say, don't grumble or argue, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and even more, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. See, that's the how. How do I get to the point where I do everything without grumbling or arguing? It's this. And you might say, well, okay, how does this how help? Well, think about it. If I'm going to grumble about something, often the case is, you know, I don't deserve it. You know, things are going, I'm not getting what I deserve. Things are going tough. I don't deserve this. Well, then I stop and think about, oh, yeah, Jesus <laughs> came to earth. He didn't deserve that to even humble himself in that sense. He did it for us because our sin had separated us from God. He did it to restore that relationship. And then you go even further, it talks about him dying, the Son of God dying and dying on a cross. So what can I really face where I say, I don't deserve this and think, yeah, I don't deserve it more than Christ didn't deserve that, but yet he humbled himself. Again, there's that how. And then the base of the triangle, I said, there's the what, there's the how. But under that, there, under that there's one more thing that's essential. That's the why. You, know, you go back to the math illustration, solve the problems is what. The how is what the teacher has taught prior on how to solve the problems. And the why, well, depends on, I guess, uh, who you are, what kind of kid you were. You know, it might be to get good grades. It might be not to get in trouble from the teacher or your parents. Either one works pretty well. But that's the why. 
I'm going to solve these problems using the how I've been taught. Same thing as Christians. We have the what, do everything without grumbling or arguing. We have the how with this attitude of humility that like Christ had. But even here, there's a why. Uh, a couple of them in verses 14 and 15, when you read the rest of it, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that, you know, why? So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. That's talking about our witness to non-believers. It's talking us standing out because we do things without grumbling or arguing. That's different in the world. That will, people will notice that. And it will be a witness for God and allows us to be a witness for God. And that's one of the things that brings glory to God. It's one of the things I've committed to doing. So that's part of my why. Paul gives a, another element, Philippians 2, 1 to 2. He says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Well, if you're like-minded, you're not going to grumble or argue with each other. And look what he says. You know, make my joy complete. Now, you and I don't know Paul, didn't know Paul personally, so that might not be a strong why for us. It was for them. But look at the rest of it. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, well, I do. I should. If any comfort from his love, I've certainly experienced that. He goes on. Those are the whys. I, God, I want to live this life. You've showed me how, this attitude of humility, to do everything without grumbling or arguing the what. And I want to. My why? Because I, I have received so much from you. And then the ultimate why that's always there at the base of everything is just God himself. You know, his, his worth. You know, why should I do it? Because God's God and I'm not. Because he created me to have this relationship. He graciously restored this relationship. And so our love for him, our commitment to him, his love for us, that's underneath everything. You know, you still might not look at the directions before you start assembling things. I don't know. But hopefully you will look at the directions when it comes to what the Bible tells us about living our Christian lives and all of the directions, not just the what. But when you see the what, look for the how, look for the why, remember the basic why that's always there. That's going to help all of us grow more effectively. So check out the action steps. Uh, share this on Facebook. I, I encourage you to. I hope you will. I appreciate it when you do. Tag two people who will benefit. Thanks.